and Brian Karn was spewing that sickness as if they are a ditty unless the grace of God prevails. And that is sick. But I would sit up in no church with the pastors telling me that without the grace of God, I'm a ditty because I am not a ditty. I would never be a ditty. Why are you defending ditty when there are victims out there, prophet to the nations, that have been literally and made to do off for multiple days? You mean to tell me all that grace is only for the bad person? This is the same guy that was in Patrick Wooden's pulpit, bishop that is, because when you suppress your you will be possessed by it. Our good friend Brian Karn had some things to say about Diddy. He wanted to do a little rebuking as well because clearly the people of God have not been acting like they had some sense when it comes to these people being exposed. Now, before I do, for those of you guys who don't know who this is, Brian Karn is a popular black prophet in the black church space. He sings, he preaches, he casts out devils. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a loud mouth, but he, he fits the prophet thing in the black church space. But it seems as though, in fairness, before we talk about what I'm going to talk about, in fairness, he sort of cleaned up his life or matured or have learned how to keep his dirt between him and the four walls. Because here lately, he hadn't been in a lot of stuff. I mean, but the thing is, by the time you finish sleeping with your friend's wife, it seemed like me, you ought to stay out of stuff. Matter of fact, sir, you ain't allowed to get into nothing for the next three years. You've done enough, regardless. He has some things to say about Diddy. Let's watch this real quick. No matter what P. Diddy has done, God's in love with him. Somebody needs to tell him that. You know, we live in an era now, and I might get a chance to get into it later, but we live in an era now where everybody want to get so. He starts off saying, no matter what P. Diddy has done, God still loves him. We don't care. We don't care. <laughs> Who asked that God still love Peter? Who, was that on the agenda of the things to talk about? <laughs> right? Why is that in the, the dialogue? What about that statement is going to move the needle forward? Feel free to disagree with what I'm saying, but Brian, we don't care if God still loves Diddy. We don't know him. Everybody want to expose somebody. But the truth of the matter is we all here because of grace. Can somebody help me understand this rhetoric that is dumbing down the heinous crimes people are doing and almost as if not for the grace of God, we would be having a thousand bottles with the baby oil and sex trafficking and racketeering and stuff. Sir, how dark are you that you need the grace of God not to have sex offs? Is, is, is it just me? Is Am I sexual? Am I asexual or something? Because sex offs and federal crimes and racketeering and all these things don't take the grace of God. It just takes some character, some integrity. And then you're talking about everybody getting excited and exposing and stuff. This is not exposure from the context of what he's talking about. This man has been doing these crimes for years. This ain't just talking about the latest gossip because Bishop Wooden said it's another thing stupid. Why are people dumbing down the heinousness of Diddy? Y'all better talk back to me. In no, here. we don't. Everybody in here should be in jail somewhere because of some of the things you've done. But thank you for his mercy. Everybody in here should be in jail for some of the things you've done, but thank God for his mercy. I am going to go out on a limb to say that Brian Karn has done some things that should have landed him in jail, but thank God for Brian Karn's mercy from Brian Karn's God, because I did. <laughs> Hold on. Maybe he's right. <laughs> no, he's not right. That's a foolish statement. Everybody's not breaking laws. Everybody is not dark. Everybody's not deviant. And I've been studying this. And what I'm coming to figure out is this language about God's love and God's grace and God's mercy and this kind of piety you get when you forgive someone of something harmful they've done for you because of this Christ adjacency that all Christians want has caused them to not see things as bad as it really is. So someone can hurt your child, harm your mother, do your family wrong, steal from you, steal another man's wife, steal another man's husband and you still forgive them. Y'all, let me tell y'all a story. A family friend was out with some friends. They were drunk, but she wasn't drunk. She was in the back seat laying down. They were so drunk, 
They crashed the car. They survived, but she died. When they realized she was dead, you know what they did? They put her in the driver's seat and then called the cops. Now, the family knew something was not right. They knew it in their gut. Recently, the deceased girl's friends confessed to the dad. And you know what the dad said. I forgive y'all. I'm not going to press charges. These people murdered your daughter and then set her up to look like a reckless driver, a sloppy driver, and fell asleep at the wheel because they didn't want to own up to killing her. And all you got to say is, but I'm not going to press charges. I'm going to forgive them. And when my mother was telling me this, I said, what? I said, mama, see, that's that thing where you could look on this man's face. He'd been ate up for years. He don't even look well. He looked like he's in grief. And instead of finally getting closure and making these people pay for this heinous crime, he chose to be religious and Christ adjacent. And that is what's going on in the Christian culture where these people are doing crazy things. Well, that's just, you know, that's just pastor. You know, well, well, he's the man of God. Don't talk about the man of God. That's a sickness. That is a sickness. And Brian Karn was spewing that sickness and damning the whole church and putting everybody in one pot as if they are a ditty unless the grace of God prevails. And that is sick. And I don't know why he thought that was okay to say. But I would sit up in no church with the pastors telling me that without the grace of God, I'm a ditty because I am not a ditty. I would never be a ditty. I don't care about no grace of God. I want to know why is ditty in me, why I need the grace of God. Bump the grace of God. I need therapy. Oh, you now you sound like you talking against Christ. No, that's why y'all crazy, because you want a grace of God, love the God, dance and bump and jump and speak in tongues versus getting your soul healed from trauma. You can't preach out no ditty in you. You can't grace out the ditty in you. You can't love out ditty in you. Ditties need jail or jail. They're done. They're beyond repentance. You can't bring that back. Heck you talking about. All right. Let's read some comments. Um, Karn, sir, it's about accountability for the wrongdoing, the abuse, the harm and damage done. Be right. Diddy is dragging a woman, drugging women, running criminal enterprise, and Lord knows what's else, and he is being held accountable for it. That's what I'm saying. That's the ridiculousness of that statement he said. He said every last one of you would is capable of dragging a woman, drugging a woman, running a, running a criminal enterprise, and Lord knows what else. If not for the grace of God, maybe you are capable of that, sir. My, my anxiety and nerves can't take that. A hit dog will holler every time. Do you think Cassie gives a D if God loves him, Goofy? And see, that's the part that I'm so glad you said that, Trey. Because why are you defending Diddy when there are victims out there, prophet to the nations, that have been literally drugged and made to do sex off for multiple days. You mean to tell me all that grace is only for the bad person? But that's how the culture is. We got more for the abuser than we have for the abused. Uh, have y'all heard about the Republican nominee for Governor Mark Robinson? <laughs> now, he's very outspoken, especially when it comes to the Rainbow Brigade. Mark cannot stand the trannies. Transgender. Tra just can't stand them. Here's something else I'm not supposed to say. Ain't but two genders. Child. <laughs> the transgender movement in this country, if there's a movement in this country that is demonic and that is full of anti the spirit of antichrist, it is the transgender movement. It's time for grown-ups and time for Christians to start standing up and being unafraid to tell the truth. Yeah, Come after me if you want to. So I don't aggressive. care if you want my head. Here it is right here. Yeah. Ugh. Um. 
Well, it appears <laughs> that there has been some links to this here round loud fella at corn, specifically the corn site, nude Africa. And here are some of the comments he was found to have said. Slavery is not bad. I would certainly buy a few. He referenced himself to a black Nazi. Now, y'all. Okay, everybody breathe. Lastly, he says, I like watching tranny on girl porn. Now, now hold on a second. Is this the same guy that was in Patrick Wooden's pulpit, Bishop that is, ratting in the raven, just a sweating, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just stirring up all types of stuff about transgendered individuals. Yet here we go again, a man of the cloth, a God-fearing man, a man that stands up for righteousness, dibbling and dabbling in the dark ways. Because when you suppress your sexuality, you will be possessed by it. The point is this. What, what blabbermouth, erroneous, dark-spirited, worrisome as heck, Patrick Wooden going to say now? You know what he's going to say? Nothing. Keep that same heat, Patrick Wooden. Keep that same standard, all of y'all that was in my comments going through it about that video I did on him. Keep that same heat. But you know what? All y'all sorry. All of you. Suckers. Spiritual suckers. Weak need. Spineless punks. You know what need to happen? You know what need to happen? Because let me tell you who know how to fight. A good tranny. A transgender know how to, the transgenders know how to fight. What needs to happen is one of these days, one of these transgenders need to meet them outside of the church and slap them in the house.